Here's an initial question for you. We'll start with a question. Why is it, uh, yesterday when we, um, when I had you sitting in your chairs and I had you test your pulse, remember? And I had you test your breathing rate. Why would I care about that? Why, why would that be an interesting thing in relation to stress? Mike? Because your heart rate has to do with, your heart rate and breathing has direct correlation to how stressed you are. Does? Oh, well, if you're breathing heavy, you're normally not thinking straight. Or if your heart rate is too heavy, you're just... So my thinking pressing. changes my heart rate? Absolutely. Yes? When you're in an intense situation, for instance, like, let's say you're a cashier and someone's robbing you, mm -hmm. your heart rate's going to increase, your thinking's going to get skewed, and I'm sure your stress level's going to through the roof. So if you're walking around heart rate, heart rate is higher, then you should be stressed normally. Does that make sense? I would go the other way. Like, if you're stressed, you're going to probably experience elevated heart rates. No, oh, that's what he's what saying. saying. Yeah. 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 So, we're magic. I mean, I'm just going to, I'm going to make my heart rate go faster. Mm -hmm. Yes? Go faster. <laughs> yes? Can you do that? I mean, okay, what about breathing? I mean, that's an interesting concept. Why would I care about, did, did I have, did I ask you if you did stomach or chest? I did that, didn't I? Mm -hmm. Why would I care about that? What's that got to do with anything stress-related? I mean, certainly we can consciously, but I said don't change how you breathe. Just grab a chair and, and uh, make yourself at home. Why would that... Isn't it when you're more relaxed, you tend to deep more, don't breathe deeply? Breathe deeply? And when you're stressed, you take shallower breaths, so it's more of a chest <coughs> Is it? I think that's with me. Like, if I'm stressed, then, like, I'm not taking those big breaths. It's, like, shorter. Gotta, like, especially when you're thinking about everything, you're like, oh, my gosh, if I get this done, this done, this, this, this. And you're, you know, you start to almost, like, have a mini panic. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. your breathing starts to be in real shallow. So, <coughs> here's the next question, then. Why in the world would that happen? Why would it happen that you're a teller at a checkout stand? What did you call it? A, a I was saying cashier. Cashier. Yeah. Teller, I, I think it makes. Um, and somebody comes and sticks. Why would it be that your heart rate does increase? Why would it be that your breathing changes? Our body's reacting to the circumstance. If we're in a position where our, we're stressed and our body feels like we need to get something done, it's going to pump more oxygen into our brain to get us energized to get something done. It, whether we have something to do or not, if we're stressing about it, it thinks we do. Okay. So let's analyze that. And I suggest you, grab, you take some notes with this because this is a big part of this first quiz that we'll be doing, but it's also what, what we play with today, if you can understand this um, and understand the times when the stress response is appropriate and the times when it's not appropriate, you've won half the battle. Uh, maybe 30% of the battle. You, you really... I think this will be a revelation to a lot of us in here. When, whenever we talk about this and people go, that doesn't seem right, that I'm stressed so much, if what you're saying is true. So let's go through this. Um, so I want you all to imagine for a second that we are somehow time traveling back to a time when, we'll say, 
let's just say for saying say 10,000 BC. I don't know what it was like then. But let's pretend that we could go back to 10,000 BC. Okay? We're living out in the wilds. It's, uh, there's certainly no electricity, cell phones, computers. There's no modern conveniences. It's just us and nature. Can you picture that? And I live over on the east bench up there in an area of the town and we're all kind of in the same neighborhood and I've invited all of you over to my estate cave for a barbecue and we've just killed some big something and we've got it on the what what do you kill back then and it's not a mammoth either <laughs> man did not live when mammoths lived um, We've killed some buffalo or something, and it's, we've got, Bobby's really strong, he's turning the thing on the fire, and we're all just kind of hanging around. We're playing golf, we've got, a, we're working on our short game, we've got some frisbee football going, we're just having a good time, okay, it's very social, our, you and your family, friends, we're all there just hanging out, okay, can you picture that? Now, while we're there, we live pretty close to a forest. And as we're playing, you know, we're working on our short game and we're just getting ready to eat. And we notice a rustling of bushes right near the forest. And then out from this forest emerges this enormous bear. Big Hummer-sized bear. It's huge. Okay? And he has smelled our food and wants some himself. Okay, can you picture that? Doing visually seeing this big bear coming at us, right? So, as you individually, as you see this bear coming at us, and as far as you're concerned, he's coming at you, what's the first thought that's going to happen in your head upon seeing the bear? Okay, that's a, what do you mean by that? What's the first thought? Okay, that's the second thought. What would you say? Okay. Okay. Something that sounds like, uh-oh, right? Whatever it is. The equivalent of what you said, whatever that sounds like for us, we say that immediately. Now, why do we have that initial thought? Yes. Our thought is, behind this is, I'm in danger. Really. Truly. I might die or have pain. Physical pain. And our bodies don't like that idea. Okay, you with me so far? Our bodies don't like pain. Really, they will do more to avoid pain than anything else. Even now, we'll do more to avoid pain, physical pain, than any other thing. So, we have this thought, uh-oh, I am in danger, expletive, and the second thought that follows that is meaning and, and our what we say to ourself is we don't say okay fight or flight what do we say so we have we have the oh uh oh thought and then the next thought is run why do we have that thought and this is obvious what do you say but why, why do we have that instinct? Yeah, so that we're not going to get eaten by the bear. So we're not going to have this happen. We want to avoid this. So our body, without, I mean, this is instantaneous. Uh-oh. The thought is, i got to get the heck out of here so that this doesn't happen. Okay? Now, the other thought 
at the same time might be what? Let's say that you're with your kids or some little kids who aren't so fast and you know they couldn't out there. You might be able to outrun the bear, but they might not be able to. So the other thought that might kick in is, yeah, but, and so we, we call that fight, right? Get my nine iron out and just start clubbing the crap out of this bear, right? Hoping that I will make it so this bear still can't hurt me physically. There's another response that might happen in that instance. Did anyone, any of you know what that is? We've, we know the fight or flight. Bobby's exactly right. The fight or flight response, there's a third one that sometimes happens. Yeah, it's called freeze. Fight or flight or freeze. I had a student once who, she was a big outdoor person and she was camping one day and she said, that a bear really did show up in her campground where she was camping and, and she really did just stand there. Uh, I, apparently that's a, what you're supposed to do maybe, but she just sat there and the bear kind of came up to her and went, and then walked away. And she was <laughs> I couldn't do that. I would be running fast. Um, okay, so you have those three possible this is kind of deer in the headlights. You know, I don't know what to do. <clears throat> Freeze. Okay, now, as this happens, you've got running or fighting or freezing. You have, as that happens, you have an enormous flood of physiology that kicks in. Not psychology, I don't want to focus on that yet. I want to focus on what happens, and it's a long list of things in the body such um, subsequent to the thought of, uh-oh, I'm in danger. So this is conscious. After that happens, it all goes unconscious. Autonomic nervous system. We'll play with that later. What are some of the things that are going to immediately take place physiologically that help kick in the fight or flight response? Okay, so we have an what happens to adrenaline? Who said that? So, we have an increase in adrenaline. What is adrenaline? Okay, we have an increase in adrenaline. There's another hormone that's involved with this almost as much. Do you know what it is? What? Cortisol. Yes, cortisol. We have an increase in cortisol as well. Both of these are designed to hormonally to make this happen. If you want to just, there's chairs and just kind of pull up a place. Um, it looks like there's room back in that corner there, unless she really likes to be wide. Okay, so we have an increase in adrenaline, increase in cortisol. What else? What other things take place physiologically? Blood pressure? Increased breathing rate. Increased sense acuity. Okay, now let me ask you, as we go through some of these things, let's ask, answer, ask ourselves, why in the world would this happen? So, why would we want an increase in blood pressure? Okay, more oxygen, if you've got a, and we'll, we'll include with that increased, what, heart rate? Your muscles are going to be what are going to propel you away from the bear. They know somehow, and some, one of you said instinctively, it's all adaptation. It's what our ancestors had to do. So it, now it is instinct for them they, they had to learn that they had to run away from the bears initially and then it just became a part of us. But why do you need an increase in oxygen to the muscles? Well, 
your body for action. Okay, and the more oxygen you have in your muscles, what happens? Mm, say it a little more scientifically. What's the scientific answer? What's the more physiological answer? Okay, um, but why would you need more oxygen in your muscles? Mm, that's nervous system stuff. Yeah, it has to do with energy breakdown. The muscles need a certain amount of three things, fat, sugar, and oxygen in order to cause the muscles to contract. The more they have of that immediately available, the faster and, and more mm, they'll recruit all the muscles necessary to get you moving, okay? Why would you need to, why would this be important? Increase your ability to sense things. Why is that important? In, that, in this moment right here. Why is that important? More awareness to keep you alive. More awareness of what? Everything. Meaning? Right. If you're, if you're running, you want to have a really clear vision of where you got to go. Right? You don't want things to be cloudy and I should go over there, but I think... No, you're like clear picture and you're bolting. Okay, what other things happen? Just think physiologically, head to toe, what other things immediately kick in or don't kick in when... Okay, so let's go with, here's some things that, here's the increase side. Let's talk, we could also add the, there's some decrease sides. You said the digestive system decreases, why is that? Exactly. You don't need to digest food. You only have so much available energy at any one moment. And if your body's working on the hamburger or the, what did we, what were we making? The bison. The bison. If it's working on the bison, then that's energy that's not going to be used immediately in your muscles. Okay? And so, the body really, it says, okay, I don't need you, digestive system. It stops working. Okay, what other things, either increase or decrease? It's a long list. Okay, so the whole plumbing. <laughs> um, let's see, what is, what system is the, the urinary, the whole, the whole plumbing part. Um, is that with two M's or a B? B, I, N, G. Plumbing turns down or off or, or works incorrectly because, again, those aren't necessary for helping you get away from the bear. What else? Think about what happens to you. You sweat. Okay. Where? Is it... Globally, is it the whole body? For some people, probably. That's an interesting one. We have an increase in sweating. So tell me, normally, when you exercise, what's the, what's the primary reason for sweating? Yeah, it's cool. It, this, the, you, we sweat so that when it evaporates, we're cooler. Has nothing to do with this. Why do we sweat when we're from the, getting away from the bear? <laughs> Actually, that's the odor part. Odor. Is, it, God, am I spilling, is that with an OR? That's right, right? Um, you actually stink to make you less appetizing. That is accurate. Why? And when I first saw this, when I was studying, you know, the, the stress response and why, what happens, and I read this and I, I saw the explanation, I went, no way. That can't be right. And I saw it in a different place. And so I said, okay, I guess that makes sense. Why do we naturally sweat when this is happening, when the bears presented itself to us angrily? That's it. <laughs> really? That's the reason. That's the reason. Thousand points. 
<laughs> it makes you less, it makes you more slippery so that when you are caught, because we didn't wear clothes back then. And so you had that as another defense mechanism. Okay, what else? Good one. What happens muscularly? The muscles tense? Do you have to tell them? All right, muscles, come on, get going. You know, they just tense, right? Now, let's ask you this. Why? Well, what, which muscles would you guess are the main ones that would tense up? Okay, legs and? Yeah, well, you're, when you punch something, this up here is what's really doing the, the, the jab, right? So, your whole fighting muscles, all of your running muscles, they're on, they're totally contracting. Okay, what about, um, oh, here's an interesting one, blood vessels. What do you think happens? They dilate. Okay, does anyone think the opposite? <coughs> blood vessels, interestingly, some dilate and some constrict. Here's a, and when we get to the problems associated with stress, this will make perfect sense why this happens, but the blood vessels that are on the heart, you know, you've got a heart right here, and you've got these blood vessels, these coronary arteries, those constrict. Is that interesting? It will be in a day or two. Um, what about blood sugar levels? And where does, where does that, uh, yes, we do have an increase in blood sugar. So that it goes to, so it converts into, what do we call that when a sugar's in a muscle? Do you remember? It's like a cool, I love saying muscle glycogen. It's, it's the sugar when it's in the muscle and that's what's used to, as part of that contraction process. We use sugar. Where does that come from? You haven't eaten anything sugary, but suddenly you have an increase in blood sugar. Where's that coming from? Okay, some of it comes from stored fat, and then and other bits of it comes from the liver. Just releases it out into the bloodstream. Okay? What about, oh, this is an interesting one. What about blood itself? What happens to it? Does it change at all? It what? Thins, you think? Why would that make sense? Say that again? Yes. So if you have more thin blood, it's able to move more quickly. The red blood cells that are in the blood are able to fly along at an easier pace. Interestingly, some blood becomes thicker. Another thousand points if anyone, why would this be the case? And, right, exactly. So the more peripheral blood if you're running along and you hit a rose bush as you're running or you scratch a branch as you're running, your body doesn't want to bleed to death at that point. <laughs> it wants to get away from the bear first. And so it coagulates. It, it, it clots more easily. It's thicker. Now, when we get into heart disease again, this raises some interesting thoughts about why we can say stress is playing a part in this. Okay, what about, okay, what are some other, think of just in terms of, oh, go ahead. So which is it then? Is Both. Your blood get thinner, does it get thicker? Both. At the same time? Yeah. The more blood that goes yeah, the more peripheral blood, the more that's close to the periphery, that tends to be more thick, the more internal blood that's more internally play or where it's more internally found even though it's moving systemically it tends to thick thicken and thin 
at the right times. Isn't that weird? But it does. So, what about, um, what are some systems in the body, think, think in term, glo more globally, what are some systems that are likely to turn off or down? In other words, systems that we don't necessarily need in this moment of trying to escape. What did you say? Saliva. Saliva. So that would be part of the digestive. So we have including things like saliva. Um, including in this would be um, digestive juices that come from the pancreas. You know, the balance between alkaline and acidity changes because your pancreas says, well, we don't need that whatever we're cranking into the stomach quite so much, so we're turning off here. And so the, the acid acidity balance, the, the alkaline acidity balance changes, which is interesting long term. Oh, yeah, the CNS, the, well, now you said another thing, there is a decrease in pain um, receptor, whatever we want to call it, um, sense, uh, sensing, so we don't sense pain, why would that be? So, yeah, let's say you're running, you're running from the bear and you, you hurt your ankle, you just went, oh, jeez, and, and both, there's been damage. And those of you who are athletes know this. When, you, when you're in the middle of a game and you hurt yourself, and you're like, oh, I can do it, I can do it. The next day, it's like you don't want to even step on it. But during the activity, there's a decrease in it, especially so in this instance. Okay. Now, what was the other thing you said about the nervous system? Oh, okay, so you're focusing on the pain of it. Um, yeah, the nervous system during this is just going crazy. It's just like your brainwave activity is increased. Let me say something about um, our, our thinking for a second. So, let's say, and you won't find this in any, I don't think we even did it in my textbook, but y you won't find this but this is still pretty accurate in how I like to describe this. We have, for the sake of this discussion, we have two parts of our brain. We have what I call an Einstein brain, which is that part of our brain that we're using right now. You know, we're, we're hearing stuff, we're thinking about it, we're processing how that would work, and you know, we're theorizing and conceptualizing and you know, all of that frontal lobe activity right? We also have what we call a lizard brain, which is that part of us primarily from the brain stem area where, well, have you ever seen, have you ever been jogging along or walking along a mountain road and you come upon a lizard and you just kind of, oh, just miss him? What does he do? Does he go, man, you're a bitch. Holy cow, and why am I so small? And yet, this ant is smaller than me still. <laughs> and how does that relate to this lifetime that I'm in? Hmm. Does that, is that what the lizard does? No, the lizard goes, zzz, zzz, and he's out of there, right? The lizard brain cranks. Now, when we're in this when we're in this situation, which of these is likely to be the dominant one? Einstein checks out. Now, that's different than what you said about sensory acuity. That's lizard brain stuff. Now, when we get to discussing the consequences of stress, and we ask ourselves, why do I not remember anything when I get ready to take my test? That's why. Because you don't need Einstein when you're thinking you're being chased by a bear. It's all clear now. Um, what other systems in the body 
likely turn off or down. Yeah, don't need any of that going on. Decrease. Which, that's another interesting one for long-term consequences. You know, all these things that people are using to try to help themselves out, just need to relax. Um, what other ones? What is that system in the body that when somebody in here coughs and the rest of us go and nothing happens to us as a result or somebody sneezes and all those virus... Yeah, our immune system. Does the immune system turn down? There are more... There is more research, just mountains amount of research that shows, and we can prove this in 18 different ways, that when a person is stressed, their immune system goes down significantly. So we wonder why we get sick as the semester rolls on, or right before a big test, or when we when we've got something that's really scary and we suddenly find ourselves, oh, I'm just so sick, I can't do it. There's a lot of... Um, it's because this immune system has decided, I need more energy, but you're using it all up over here. Think of anything else? Oh, here's an interesting one. Um, What happens to your hair? In that instant? I mean, in this instant. I mean, down, down ter downstream, long term, it might be, a, it affects it. But what about in that immediate moment, what happens to your hair? No. What did you say? Stands on its end. Have you ever seen a cat? <laughs> right? Dog shows up and cat goes, why does it do that? Yeah, it makes it appear larger and we have the same thing we just don't have any more hair but we used to and that was part of us the hair you've you've heard the saying you know I could feel the hair standing on the back well that's a real thing we still have enough hair now to make any difference is there anything else any other Susan can you think of any systems that were any parts of the body we're missing um, Go through the head to toe. Uh, d we, we mentioned breathing rate. Where are you likely to breathe from? Chest, Chest or stomach? Chest. Chest. Have you ever watched somebody who's really angry on TV? Are they going? <laughs> no, they're going. You can see their chest is just going. <sighs> well, why do we do that? What's the, what's the intent? It's a natural thing. They don't consciously go, okay, I've got to breathe faster. Why do we do that? I mean, it's, yeah, exactly. We're trying to get more oxygen in and thinking if we do it more quickly, more will get in there to the brain and to the muscles. Now, we could go on and on with the, this list. It's quite amazing, all the different things that happen. This is enough. The next question is this. All of this happens for one single reason and only one. What is it? Physical survival. That is the only reason, the only reason this is a functioning part of our physiology. So that we don't die and we don't have physical pain. It has no other useful purpose in the human in our system, in, in our form, it doesn't have any other useful reason for being except to keep us alive um, in the presence of a big bear or the equivalent. That tick you off. 
Okay, so now let's ask this question. Does anyone have a calculator? Do you have one? Can you remind me your first name? I remember your... Sarah, okay. Sarah, would you mind... Um, I'm going to have you keep track of some numbers. That I'm going to ask everyone in the class this question. I'm going to ask each of you individually just a really quick question. I want you to answer accurately as possible. I want you to answer um, thinking of the last month of your life. So the last 30 days. I want you to tell me how much of that time you were in situations that were the equivalent of a bear coming after you. In other words, your life really was, honest to goodness, in danger. Got that? Does that make sense for everyone? So I'm going to come around, I'm going to ask each one of you, and then, Sarah, I'm going to have you keep track. I'll tell you what numbers to punch in there. Okay? So, in the last, and everyone, so that when I get to you, have the answer in mind. So you're not calculating when I finally get to you. Just kind of think, okay, last month, well, I was whitewater rafting and the raft fell over. And so that was like 20 seconds and I was in a fire and, or I was falling down a hill or somebody was chasing me for sure. Um, have that answer in mind. So, and I'll ask you when you do tell, I'm kind of interested in what you did that caused that. So. So, so nothing comes to mind, and that's very likely for a lot of us. Nothing. Zero. No, and at the same time, there might be a situation that we're in. Every time we do this in the wintertime, we always have far more because people, you know, cars sliding sideways or people crashing. In. So real life-threatening situations are more prevalent in the winter. But that's not to say we're not having, I'm not try to, trying to show that it's a zero for everybody either. Nothing for you, Fatima? Zero. Zero. Nothing? Mm -mm. Okay. Well, geez, you guys need to do more fun stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think of one thing. What happened? Uh, we were tubing down a river mm. and we thought this area was on the edge route so we can get off and start all over again. Mm -hmm. And I got off my tube and the river just took me away. And oh, I good. I couldn't like put my feet down or anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and I love that one. I was like hitting rocks and everything and like these people behind You me. were? Yeah, I was like, I hit my knee or my leg on a rock and didn't even know it until I got out walking and my leg was all bleeding. See? This kind of stuff's taking place for you. So how long do, did that last? Um, from, from when you were in danger to when you were no longer in danger, not the afterwards, whew, that was tough part. Well, it was just like, like I don't know, not even five minutes because these people... Five people, minutes? Not even that, like... Yeah, so what would you say real time where you were actually um, life-threatening? Like two minutes. Two minutes. Was, so that's yeah. quite a long time, it seems like. But Okay, so... <laughs> so <laughs> really? Okay. Like, the only reason, like, I, these people behind me were on a tube also, and they caught up to me, and that's when I was able to jump off, you, like, push myself off a rock, and then they caught me. Oh, okay. So about two minutes. Yeah. Okay, so to yeah, put a two in there. <laughs> good one. That's a good one. Good answer, okay. Um, meeting the other day, I had a truck. I was just coming down the road, mm -hmm. the truck passed me and honked at me from behind. And it was like a mean honk, you could just tell. I mean, it was a diesel and he pulled up in front of me and he just slammed his brakes on. So there was a moment of you could have been hurt here. Yeah, he, like, he got how, right in front of me and just slammed his brakes. How long did that last? Five seconds. Let's see, let's go to seconds. Change that to 120 and then five. So just keep adding, that would be up to 125 now. Um, like monthly experience or how much time it takes? I don't know, is it a cool experience? <laughs> I don't know. Well, we were... Almost dying is always fun. <laughs> we, <were body surfing. laughs> we were body surfing in the Virgin Islands. Oh, okay. And it was just this beach that like, we used to hike to and there was just us there before this. And a current took me up to these rocks. Oh. Me and my friend. And so you were out of control going underneath um, or were you part yeah, of I on could, top? I could stand on the water but the current was so strong like both of us either walking or swimming I was going back into the ocean. Okay. And then in, eventually we dropped but. So how long did that last? It lasted probably like a whole, the whole experience. 
okay, so you were actually in danger? Um, I would say the danger is probably like 15, 20 minutes, but like... Really? I don't know, I realized it, and then I was like, uh-oh. And then like, <laughs> that was going on. <laughs> <laughs> and like, kind of the stress of like, I'm gonna go through the drop, you know? Like, so, I was so it was 15 full minutes of that. So I was probably swimming for like 15, 20 minutes, and like, Okay. Full time, like, my friends were trying to get to us. Okay. So let's let's go back to minutes and change that to <laughs> now you got seventeen point whatever the five. Let's go to let's go back to minutes. Thank you. That's a that's a, sounds exciting. Anything for you, Taiwan? Okay. Two seconds. What happened? Mm. <laughs> were you in danger? No, but were you really though? Oh no. So zero. I'm not saying that that didn't affect you, but I'm interested in just the, the I'm really in danger part. Um, I got cut off by a semi on the freeway and the guy behind me almost hit me, but he swerved. Mm. It was only like 30 seconds. 30 full seconds to do all just that? I mean, well, yeah, because the semi, you, we, we kind of saw him going over and we slammed on our brakes, and then the guy behind me, you could hear his car like screeching. But I, I don't know the effect of it, like, probably was like 30 seconds. But like the actual endangerment was kind of like. Okay, so another point. What's 10 of 60 point, whatever that is. Um, another point three or point two. Doesn't matter, it's close enough. Nothing? Um, in the summer, I'm a wildland firefighter. I work on oh, so you do? Yeah. Okay, but I want to come back to you. Because um, <laughs> that's, that's different for you. Um, Oh, I did a Ooh, pretty. And I was like, I'm not really speaking part. And I stepped on a rock and it moved, and I like fell, and then I like turned up the. You did fall? Yeah. What? Like I fell, but then I like the, the railing. Was you got there. the railing. And like six people down, I hiked this far, just like three seconds. Okay, so add another three seconds, however you want to do that. Just point, just do point three, yeah, uh, or point oh three. Let's do a .03 or something. Uh, just like three seconds when I, I had the right away and then a car was turning and they almost hit me. And, and he was like, oh, I'm going to get hit. And okay. Sorry, I didn't ask you. What was yours? Uh, Did you have any? Oh. So, you, but you came really close to hitting them. Yeah. Okay. That will, however long that took. Add that in. I had an experience, I was doing the two and being pulled by the boat, and I hit a wave when I was up about eight feet near, and I was coming down, and uh -huh. the angle I was at, I thought I was going to, when I hit the ground, I'd snap my spine. The ground? Or the water. Oh. <laughs> that would be much scary. Yeah. yeah. But the whole, the whole experience of realizing I was going to hit the water was probably like a fourth of a second. How fast were you going? Um, I'm Oh, okay. So kind of quick. Yeah. Um, so add another point one, point oh five. Okay. Nothing? Okay. Back in my husband's motorcycle, he's making a left turn, and someone literally almost that's scary when you're on a motorcycle. Mm-hmm. Yeah, very. Okay. Add another that. Nothing. Nothing at all. You? Anything? Um. When I I was in and um, I got on the wrong train and went and the transfer the Frankfurt what? Frankfurt Hop Van Hop, so like the main team species. Oh, okay. And um, I had like a really stinky like come up to me and like he was really mangled and stuff. And so he, I don't know if that really classifies it, but there was nobody around and he was, I don't know. Did, was he, did he have a gun? No. But. Did he come after you? He passed out on me, like, he started, like, getting closer to me and then passed out on me. <laughs> <laughs> I was surprised. But, I mean, like... But you weren't actually in danger for real. I guess, well, I don't know, because the situation was kind of, I don't know. I mean, if How long was that? It was, like, ten minutes. Mm, okay. Um, I don't know, like... But the, the, the time when you were... Honestly, in danger. Would probably have been like, I want to say like the first like few minutes because I didn't know what he wanted and I didn't understand So put understand three it. more. That's, we'll go with that. I don't want to believe it 
that you're in danger of it. No, I'm not saying, and I'm not no, saying that wasn't serious for you, but it also wasn't, well, you could have died there. Well, unless he started that. coming after you. Right, you didn't know no, that. I, I don't know, like, does that count? Like, not really, but we'll let it for now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what about you? Yeah, I don't think mine really counts, but the last time I really felt in danger of my life was when I asked my friend to take me on a really dangerous motorcycle ride because I had some other stresses. I want to get away from. Good call. So I did. I specifically asked him to. Um, no, not really a good call. Um, but we went through um, the Weaver Canyon and it was at night, so the wind was going really, really badly. Yeah. And there was a couple of times where it kept shifting the bike. And I oh, felt okay, like, that I'll buy. Like, and, <laughs> <laughs> like, I, many times during that ride, I felt like. So, how long? It was like a 20 minute bike ride. <laughs> through Weaver Canyon? Yeah. We went pretty far. Into how fast were you going? Like, maybe not. How long is the Weaver Canyon? Okay, so let's, so, well, let's, let's try this and see what happens. I'm interested. So put 20 in there. We'll add that in, because that might be legitimate if the, the environment is causing um, unsafe conditions for you. Nothing? Uh, about 10 minutes. 10 minutes? Yeah. What would, what? Like halfway through, we got stuck in a reversal, so it just sort of spins around and around. Yeah. That was fun. But then the other two minutes is like we were doing some canyoneering down in Lake Powell. Mm -hmm. Some rocks fell from underneath us, so we were just hanging there. Like, we were there for like two minutes before our friends came down. Good. I'll take those fun ones too. Um, <laughs> did you say 10? Yeah, let's go with that. Dave? Nothing? Okay. Zero? Really? Okay. Nothing? Anything? Um, uh, at Boy Scout camp, I actually had a bear in the camp. Oh, good. How long, <laughs> how long did that last? Where, was he coming at you? No. It was about 30 yards away. Oh, so quite a distance. So you weren't really in danger, but potentially you could have been, but he wasn't actually bearing down on you. So I'm going to count that. Okay. Not going to count that one. Okay. But anything else? No. Nothing. Okay. Um, probably like four seconds. What happened? Um, a couple of things. One of them. In was four like, seconds? Wow. Well, no, no, no. They're two separate. Oh, okay. But um, <laughs> I was running up on like they were above the mountain. I was running on the hills behind my house. Actually, in the in the so oh, cool. Up on that mountain. Okay. And there was a rattlesnake there and I almost stepped on it and but I was okay. Okay. It, it like struck at me but like I was out of the it way. It did strike at you? Yeah. Okay. I was out of the way. Like I jumped really far. I never did that far in my life. <laughs> <laughs> I was out of the way by the time. I want to talk to you later about where exactly you were. Okay. We're, yeah. we're, we're trying to find those and kill them. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want them up there. Oh. And then your other one? Okay. And so the um, jet ski kept going. Anyway, so we're like chasing it around. <laughs> like, it was so bad. Like for like five minutes, we're like chasing it everywhere. Now, were you in trouble? Like, were you? The boat came and almost hit me. Oh, so somebody came and. Yeah, and they almost, because we like didn't have like a flag. The or red flag wasn't up there. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, Jet skiing tip number so, yeah, three. Probably like three seconds of that when the boat was coming like right at me. Okay. Luckily they saw me like last second. So. Um, so whatever that feels like for you to put in there. Five seconds? Yeah. Like okay. Anytime? Like five seconds. I got a new mower and I have a tilt deck trailer and it was the driveway was in a steeper angle than I thought. Uh -huh. I went to go up and it started wheeling backwards. My brother ran up and pulled it back. Was it on? Oh, it was, yeah, it was running it. Oh, that would be. The zero turned the motors in the back, so the front has no weight on it. So I went up and I just wheeled up. And oh. My brother yelling at me, let off the sticks. And I'm going, I let off, it goes backwards. <laughs> really? <laughs> so I was holding it up. Yeah. 
So how long was that? That was like five seconds. Okay. Since then I put weight in the front. <laughs> Good call. How about you? Zero? Okay, I'm gonna come back to you in a minute. Um, okay, Sarah, will you do this map? Okay, what, what's the number that you got there? So if you add that all up. Oh no, don't say oh shoot. Oh. Fifty point six three minutes, right? Yeah. Minutes. Now, what's your name? Mike. That's right. Um, I want to. How much time would you say that you spent in in this right here? Uh oh, I'm really in danger. Bad things could happen right now. That much? Yeah, oh no, I believe that. I believe that. So, there's time that Mike was chilling, but there's times mm -hmm. where there's a helicopter hovering like 15 mm -hmm. feet above me, and there's a cable below it, and I have to hook like a cargo net to it. Right. And that helicopter just needs, it's, it's at a point where if it falls, there's no, You're dead no redemption. I'm dead. Yeah. Um, and then there's times where I'm out like sleeping out on the fire, and the fire could creep up on, creep up on us at night. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's, so in the last month, 10 hours? Uh, 10, 12 hours, I'd say 10. So what's that, six, is that 600 minutes? Am I adding that right? Okay, for Mike. Okay, now, is that right math? 10 hours times 60 minutes is 600, right? That's why I didn't go into math. So. <laughs> Do this math. So we have 40 people in here. I don't know if we have 40 today. So multiply 40 times 60 minutes times 24 hours times 30. What's that number? Seven hundred and twenty-eight thousand cumulative minutes we've lived in this class, right? Is that, am I thinking right there? Okay, now I want you to divide 50.63 into that. Okay, do it the other way. It would be point zero zero. Oh, so negative five. Does that mean there's four or five zeros? Then what? So the numbers are two point nine That's right. So one more zero still? Yeah. You're right, because you move the dot five spaces and it makes two point nine three. Well, it doesn't matter. Less than one. <laughs> Okay, now I want you to do the same thing with mics just for fun because this has only happened once or twice before where somebody has a legitimate job where they are in danger a lot of their... So it, the, all the years, it's like Z, still zero, zero, zero? Yeah. So, then, then what? Isn't that how that should be? Mm -hmm. So still, Mike's less than 1%. That's if it was the whole class in an hour. Oh, that's right. So divide that by 40. Or multi multiply by 40, right? This is too much math. 0 0.013. Still less than 1% of his month. Okay, the point I'm trying to make here, and Mike is the exception, <coughs> we are only in situations in our lives, and it is always less than 1%. In the 15 years I've been teaching this class, it is always this. 
we are in situations in our lives that are legitimately stressful, in other words, where this is legitimately on for the purpose that it's designed, less than 1%. How many of you on that stressometer the other Tuesday when I when I said on a scale from 0 to 10 how many of you put higher than 3 Did anyone put less than 3 I don't remember and some of you were 10 So what's going on in your brain when I say you're never in need of this Yet this is always happening. A little. <laughs> right? I mean, if, if it's all, get this guys, Our, its only purpose is to help us not get dead or have pain. That's the only reason why we have this happening to us. And yet we're never in situations where we legitimately need it. Um, it's just kind of like everything else with human uh, biology and everything. It's like a natural occurrence that is really nice to have when we need it, but if you overdo it, oh, like yeah. overeating, sleep, or overeating or oversleeping, all those are good initially until you binge on them. Who was our angel's landing? Who was our angel's landing gal? So were, did you feel any of this? When, when you were slipping? No, but I mean, didn't you feel like, did you suddenly, did your muscles tense up? Like, you're like grabbing for your life? I mean, could you have fallen a long ways? Yeah, and when that's happening, we're glad this kicks in. Have any of you ever been chased by somebody who you didn't know? Let's see, who was our, um, was it you who had the person stalking you? Who was the, oh yeah, you. What was your name? Annie? Andy? Andy? Andy. Yeah. Andy. So, if he would have come at you, do you think you would have appreciated your ability to run super fast or beat the tar out of him? <laughs> you would have liked that, right? We love, see the thing that this does is it gives us super power, super speed immediately in those times when we do need it. That's the only reason we have it. We're glad we have it. I mean, when the fire's coming upon you, you want to be able to just bust out of there and beat the flames. I don't know how that works, but I'm guessing sometimes you're outrunning them sometimes, I'm guessing. A few times. It's terrifying. Yeah, and you want to be able to be faster than lightning. We love that we have that. The problem is we're never there. This is our reality. So what's going on? Why would we be stressed if we're never in stressful situations? Right. You're right there. So why would we you know, somebody give us an emotional stress. Okay, let's take, let's take a, a, an exam, a really important exam. We'll play with exams a lot in here. We won't do any, but we'll play with them. So, what is the thought that's happening in your head because we said earlier, we're magic. Our brains make our heart rate go faster, our breathing goes faster. Um, what is the thought that we have that says, um, I'm in trouble? Since we're not physically, no one I, that I know of has ever died from a test. Something like that, yeah. And we have this perception that if I fail, We've equated that to, I'm going to be in really bad danger. Mm -hmm. What's your name? Mikkel. Mikkel. Can I use you for a second? Can you come up here for a second? 
I want everyone in here to pretend they're Mikkel. That would be fun, huh? <laughs> okay. Um, so, Mikkel, can I ask you, um, have you ever been to like a major league baseball game or a big, an NBA basketball game or anything like that? Have you ever been, or even a college basketball game? Yeah, yeah, I go to jazz games. You go to yeah. jazz games? So yeah, you have been. So when you go to the jazz game, if you get there early, you see the people warm up and you know, see the, the guys down there, they're, they're just shooting layups, sh jump shots, they're stretching a little bit, and then they go back in the locker room or whatever, and then they, or it, it never seems to be the same, but they come back out and then they're, uh, they do the national anthem and then they tip the ball off and then they play, right? Does that sound familiar? Okay. So what I'd like you to do, I'd like you to pretend for a second that you're at a jazz game and you're the person who's singing the national anthem. <laughs> okay. And so... And there's no music, it's just you doing a cappella, you're just on your own. I'd like you to just, right here, I'd like you to sing. <laughs> oh, no. I don't even know all of the national anthems. Just, just the first. <laughs> That's a sad. <laughs> no, I don't sing. <laughs> so, but you know like the first, what is the, oh say can you see by the oh, dawn's okay. early light. So just start into the first, like, the first, go ahead, just. No, sing it. Like, l no, 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 I'd like you to sing it <laughs> like at a jazz game. So they really barrel it. They like, <laughs> let it fly. Just. <laughs> <laughs> You've never sung it before? No, I have. But so I you can sing, sing it. I can. Well, I can yell and scream, but I don't, I'm not a good singer. <laughs> but you've sung it before, so you can. Yeah, so can. just let it fly. <laughs> Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light? What's so proudly we, we, hail. Hail, yes. <laughs> That's all I know. That's all you know? <laughs> okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Give her a, an applause. <laughs> so, can I ask you some questions now? And, and, Thank you very much that you're like one in five in all the years I've ever done that who have actually done it. <laughs> um, how many in here could have done the same thing Mikkel did, just, just start singing? Anyone else in here who, yeah, I probably could have done that. One, two, three, four. So this is a, an extraordinary group. How many, <laughs> ain't no way I'm getting up there and saying anything that has musical sounds to it. How many are in that category there? Yeah. Um, now, when you were up here and I said, would you please sing, did you notice anything happen? Yeah. I, you did? I can't sing, so my heart starts racing. You noticed that? Mm -hmm. You did? Mm -hmm. I think we all did it though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, wasn't just her. it was a collective. That's funny. Do um, you want to try? No. <laughs> now, oh, what's your name again? I'm Allie. Allie. So you you say no way you could do that. No way. You did it, and you had a little bit of you noticed some of this happening, right? But there's no way you could do this. I had a relief that it wasn't me when he said sing. I'm like, Woof. Thank goodness. <laughs> well, let me ask you this, and everyone else in the same boat. If you were at your house, and you were vacuuming, and you knew there was nobody around, or you're in a shower, you're just doing dishes, or something mundane, would you have had any problem singing? No, I'd sing then. You'd, no problem, right? Yes. Okay. Is anyone else still, like, I ain't doing it, no matter what, even if there's nobody for miles. We're all okay with doing it then, right? Okay, so let me ask you this. It's the same thing here, or at a jazz game, or at your house as far as what you're doing. Why is it that we, mm, what's different about those such that your heart rate's going and you're just freezing when, when the thought of it happens, what do you think? I would have to feel like a social pressure, like you're around people that you don't want to do, so you 
And what have we decided about judgment? No, but wh when somebody, yes, yes, culturally, what have we decided about when somebody judges us mm, harshly? Sorry, <laughs> and a spit. What have we decided? Um, I was gonna say before that that isn't that a form of social anxiety, like the fear of not impressing other people and stuff like that. Sure, it's the number one fear in the country is getting in front of people and performing. Number one. More than death. People would rather <laughs> die than stand. Not, that's not the case as much here in Utah as other places I've been. I've, people really hate the idea of just being up here at all scares people, let alone singing, right? Um, what do you think? Judging is bad, and it's like something you're not supposed to do. But everyone does it. I mean, really based like what they think of, what they see. Like you're told not to judge, but you know, if you hear that a movie's bad, someone thought you're probably not gonna go see that movie. Be like, oh, that movie's bad because someone's judged it's bad. Yeah, we we buy into it a lot, don't we? The uh, the judgments around us, we buy into it. Now, when Mikhail was up here. So we've, we've decided, yes, that judgment hurts. Okay, two questions. When you were up here, Mikkel, Annie? Allie. Allie. <laughs> Let, come out here just for a second. I promise I won't make you sing. I promise. <laughs> but I just want you to, to, to stand here for just a second. Is that really the time? Um, okay, so you stand over here. Now. I want everyone in the class. First of all, when you were doing this, when you were up here, um, and when you were thinking down there, what are the thoughts that you had that you were thinking people might have about you? That camera just makes me nervous. So I was just trying not to look over So it was the camera. Yeah. Okay, so that's even, there's, there's no way that the camera that. can even hurt you. I mean, that's even less somebody's thinking. <laughs> But, yeah, yes. <laughs> until it goes viral. Yeah. So, what is it, what are the thoughts that you, that you were thinking that they were having, the judgments that you were thinking they would have about you? But she can't sing. <laughs> I know I can't they sing. They would say, man, she's a she rotten sucks, singer. Yeah. How many of you in here said, oh my gosh, she really is awful. <laughs> did any of you actually do that? You did, yeah? <laughs> okay. All the time. That's <laughs> um, now, what, here's what I want to try. I want you all, for just a second, to think the most mean, despicable thing you can think about both of these young ladies. Just for just a second. Just for a second. I want you to try. I don't want to hear it. Not out loud. I just want you to think. Oh man, her hair needs to be better. Just say something that's in, in your head. And I want to demonstrate something here because it's so obvious and yet we've suckered into this cultural belief that other people can make us feel how we feel. So go ahead, just lay it on them. <laughs> really, just give them, give them your worst. Am I allowed to participate? You can, but not vocally. Yeah. Now, are you feeling anything? Are you sensing those mean vibes? No. Nothing's happening, right? Okay. Okay, thanks. You can go sit down. Now, what does that tell us about the, the fear or the stress we have when we are in front of a group? What does that immediately tell us? What I heard. It is a hundred percent in our heads. See, I, I submit to you, and people don't want to hear this at first because they don't, want to, they, they don't want to go in this direction. The world is not a stressful place and there's nothing stressful in it. Except for the, those less than 1% of the time occasions. And even then, you still have a choice about, is it possible for Mike in when that helicopter's going over him, 
Is it possible for him, I'm not saying is it likely, but is it possible for him to not have this thought happening? Yeah. yeah. It would take a lot of work. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I see these people who do flips on motorcycles upside down, and I guess a guy died recently. Did you hear about this? Somebody, was it at Snow Basin? Somebody, I mean, powder about, yeah, they were, they, did, they died. So you could, they have a different thought when they're doing the double backflips on their motorcycle than if you or I were on the motorcycle. The point is, every single stress that you have is entirely your doing. A hundred percent your doing. I can't think of a single instance and I've tried for 15 or 20 years to, because I've been playing with this that long, where there is no event that is universally stressful. I can't think of one. Those people who do, I, I think of the people who are suicide bombers, what's going on in their heads? Seventy-two virgins are waiting for me. That's kind of a pleasant thought. That's what they think. Really. There's no, oh my gosh, this is bad. They're thinking, this is the most righteous thing I could possibly do. Yeah. It is entirely what's happening in here that causes the physiology. It is not what's happening outside of us. Now, some of you will have friends when you tell them this who will say, you're crazy, you don't live the same life I live. You should see what I have to go through. And I acknowledge that we have really crazy lives. But we also have lives where this is not a necessary component except for very, very rarely. Does that make sense to everyone? So the three that, or the 10 or the eight that you put on the stressometer, just get it. It's okay that you have it. I'm not saying you're bad because that's the number you put. What I'm saying is you did it to yourselves. Now we'll figure out in the upcoming weeks how to undo it because it's easy to undo once you start to understand what's going on. But ain't nobody doing it to you. And that's, that's good news, I think. Any questions, comments about that? So we will start on next week. I don't have any assignments for you today, so we'll, we'll call that good for today. Have a great weekend, and thanks everyone for participating. Thank you, too, for coming up. I appreciate it. See you guys. What do you think that number would be?